going to make my sauerkraut this morning and I have stripped off the uh, old ugly outer leaves and I have weighed this because we want to determine how much salt we're going to use and the ratio is <clears throat> one tablespoon of salt for every one and three quarter pounds of shredded cabbage. Now I've got the core mostly removed. Let's see if I can make this visible here. Yeah, the core is mostly removed, but we will be eliminating some of that as well. And I've got a total of seven uh, pounds, nine ounces. And for that, we would need four and a half tablespoons of salt. Now, I will probably be removing extra material from this that will not be used. So I'm going to go with a ratio of four tablespoons of salt for this cabbage because it won't be the full seven pounds, nine, ou nine ounces that I'll be using. So it'll be close enough. Um, and yes, I guess we could weigh uh, the balance of what we don't use and determine if I'm close enough there. Okay, I finally found my mandolin. As I said, I'm not really thrilled on using this thing, but I think it's great for doing cabbage. Um, and it does have a safety uh, feature here. So we'll see how that goes. Now, getting back to salt. I have two different kinds of salt uh, in-house that I can use. I've got sea salt. And that definitely does not have anti-caking agents inside because this box is pretty hard. And I also have pink Himalayan fine salt that I bought at Dollarama. And I can use this. Sorry. There are some that would prefer using pink Himalayan salt. Uh -oh. As long as you've got a fine grind so that this can dissolve, we're good to go. So I'll just... You know what? Why don't I try the pink Himalayan for a change? I did buy a few packets of this, so I might as well start using it. I am going to measure out, what did I say, four tablespoons. And I may mix this in some warm water, just so that I know it's dissolved, and when I pour it over the shredded cabbage, uh, it hopefully will um, disperse the salt evenly. Now you absolutely don't need any liquid when you're um, fermenting cabbage because it does wilt and creates its own liquid, but adding a little bit won't hurt either. I've known people to do that as well. So choice is really up to you. I'm going okay, first things first. Let's cut this cabbage into quarters. Hopefully quarters will be more manageable. Okay, that was likely the worst part, but it's a nice tight cabbage. Okay. And we want to finish coring these. So I am going to save this to weigh it as well just for the idea of the salt. That one looks good. Okay. also want to save a couple of the outer leaves and I'll explain that later. Actually, that and perfect. Okay, that should do it for the outer leaves. And 
want to put this aside. And the first thing I'm going to do is measure out, and I do have my pink Himalayan sea salt in a jar here, and I'm going to measure out four tablespoons. Okay, now the tricky part. Got my knives. Let's get my mandolin going here. Now you can put it through a food processor, I suppose. I like don't like the little chips it creates. I prefer the slices. Oh yes, the mandolin's working great. And I did adjust it. to the thinnest slices that I could make with this. And as I said, I'm not a fan of this tool. It is dangerous. <laughs> um, but if you know how to use it, it's an awesome tool. And I think that comes with practice. but certainly you can uh, chop this a lot finer using this tool than you can with a knife. And it's a lot quicker. So I'm going to carry on until I have all of this cabbage shredded. Well, actually, I'm going to stop right there. I've got my one-gallon jug handy to put all this into. And so the idea is to fill up this one gallon jug. I'm going to sprinkle a little bit of salt right now and this is the process I'm going to use until it's completed. So I will make, shred some, add it to the jar, sprinkle a tiny bit of salt and keep going until the whole cabbage is shredded. And I will get back to you when this process is completed then. Okay, I've got <laughs> uh, at least another almost half of the cabbage yet to do uh, because I've left the smaller chunks to do by hand. I've got two of those. I've still got the third piece that's not quite done and another whole quarter yet to be done. So there's still a lot to do but uh, my jar is just about full and one of the things that is always recommended is to squish it all down. Now this helps to bring out the juices. From my perspective this is not totally necessary. The cabbage will wilt in a few hours anyway and the juices will come out. But I'm going to do this in order to try and get the whole cabbage into this one container. So, and yes, doing this you can actually see the juices starting to form. And you want to use a wooden, I've got my rolling pin here, which is actually quite suitable for this job. Believe it or not, it does not hurt the cabbage at all to do this. Okay, I think I've pounced it down enough that I should be able to make room for the rest of this. Hopefully, if not, I'll pound it down some more as I'm going along. Okay, I've got my cabbage pretty much done, but I do have all these pieces that I uh, don't trust to the mandolin. <laughs> I don't trust running my fingers through there. So these are going to be done by hand. And it can be done. It's just a little more work. So, and yes, I want to try and slice it as fine as I um, can possibly do it. And this one's a thick chunk, so... It's being done on its own. 
Um, others I can do a few pieces at a time, but this one's quite thick. So, once again, the idea is just to slice it as fine as you possibly can. And I don't want to waste any of this cabbage, so the idea is to do as much of it as I can here. Now here's a, a little grouping. Let's see if I can bring the camera down so you can see this better. Okay, so I'm hoping to do this little bunch all together here. And it will mostly be possible. got that bunch done and it'll go into the jar as well. So we'll continue along and try to get all these pieces done and into our jar. Okay, remember I said that I have some leftover pieces. Now I'm not going to deal with that just yet because I really don't intend to leave this cabbage in this container. I had just used this container to um, gather it all together. I want to put this cabbage in two half gallon jars, um, but I want to, at this point, wait until it has wilted a bit and the salt has permeated this mixture. And so I'm just going to scrunch this down and leave it for a couple of hours until it, it wilts a little bit more. And then we will stuff this into half gallon jars. I could have done that initially, I suppose, but I wanted to make sure that the salt ratio was pretty consistent with the whole thing. And what I'll probably do is pour this into a large pot, mix it all up once it has wilted somewhat. And yes, I don't know if you can see that, but there is liquid forming already. And we'll get to why that's important after we're done here. But for now, I'm just going to squish this down a bit. As I said, this isn't really necessary. You could eliminate that and just add some water. But the salt brings out the liquid in the cabbage. So rather than using tap water or whatever water, you're actually using the liquid from the cabbage itself. Okay, so I'm going to set this aside for the time being and let it continue to wilt. And we'll come back after a couple of hours. Oh yes. You can see pockets of liquid there already. Okay. Pretty easy. Just a matter of slicing it all up fine. And if you choose to use a food processor, that works as well. I just, it's not my favorite method. I like to shoot the shreds rather than tiny bits. Okay. Okay, I've put my sauerkraut in a large pot mostly so I could just mix it all up, make sure that the salt was evenly distributed. And I could have done this from the start and omitted this, um, putting it in the other jar and getting that dirty, but I guess I just didn't think of it. Now, it's somewhat wilted and I'm liking it. I like the taste. Mm. In the past, I think I used to make it too salty because I didn't measure the amount of salt I was using. So that's important to note. Excuse me. 
Mm. It's crunchy and very nicely tasting. Okay. I've got two mason jars here. Sorry, two half gallon mason jars. In turn, fill each one of these up. Try to get the same amount in each one. Get them somewhat close. Okay, I also could have made the coleslaw directly in these jars, but I just wanted to get my salt ratio correct, so I decided to do it all in one batch because even when you're cutting your cabbages in quarters, they're not exact quarters. So I would have had to cut them, measure them, and then measure salt for each piece that I weighed, which would have worked as well. Okay, at this point, I'm going to <laughs> squish this down. And we'll continue along. juice is starting to form here. Now in this pot I also have a whole bunch of juice that was made or extracted from the cabbage and we want to pour that right back in there. Okay, so I've got pretty much more than a cup, so it's going to go half in each one. Very good. That's what we wanted, was lots of this juice to form. So we'll just continue pressing this down. and remove anything that is on the sides here. And that's where these cabbage pieces come into play now. We're going to form a protective layer here. to keep air out. And keep everything under the liquid.
Okay, that's step one. Okay, and you know these little smallest mason jars available that I consider very useless? Well, this is one area where they're very useful. And I just use that to keep everything down. And as you can see, everything is under liquid there. Now, I can also fill those up with water if need be, but for the time being I'm going to let this try to produce more of its own liquid as we uh, let it ferment so that it doesn't spill out too much. Now I'm just going to find some plastic lids for these. And you don't want metal because the salt will corrode the metal. So if you don't have two plastic lids, just put a coffee liner or some parchment paper in between your metal and the glass. Now, at this point, you don't want this tight. You want it to be able to ferment. You may want to put a dish underneath this in case it, uh, the liquid overflows the jar. You don't want spillage. And you leave this for approximately three weeks. And then you should have a very awesome tasting sauerkraut. I've tasted it. I like the taste of it. So far so good. When it matures, it should be awesome. Okay, that's it for now. Hope you enjoyed this video, and we'll catch you on the next one. Oh, and as you can see, the hardest part of making sauerkraut is shredding the cabbage.